Hi, George here. Let's take a look at how you can use the Adobe Color Wheel with Photoshop Elements. And there's a lot that you can do here and very, very powerful program. But what the basic idea is, is this allows you to create colors that work well together as a color system. For instance, if I pull this apart like that, I have my basic blue right here in the middle. And then the colors across the color bar right down here, I'll work well with that first particular color. There are several different ways of looking at color over here. Left hand side, we'll come back to this. Let's first see what else you can do in here. You find this at color.adobe.com, and I'll put a link for that in the description as well. The first tab is the color wheel. We then have extract theme, extract gradient, and accessibility tools. Now, to get the most use out of this, you'll need to be logged into your Adobe account. You already have one if you have Photoshop Elements. Just go ahead and log into your account and you find the login button upper right hand corner. You can then use the full features here. On extract theme, this allows you to bring in a photograph or a graphic image, and then Adobe Color is gonna pull the colors out of that and give you a theme. Let's see how this works. I have a picture right here, just a picture of some apples. Let's just drag and drop that right here. And there we go, it goes through and it finds the colors and pulls those out. Notice you can see where the colors are chosen from, and we can then actually adjust that if I didn't want it from here, I can maybe move this over here a little bit and find a better color in that range. And I think brighter is better right there. So you can fine tune the color choices. And that's pretty good. There we go. So it pulls out a series of colors or a set of colors from your image. Now you can use this and either save it out to your hard drive, save button right here. We'll look at that in just a bit. Or you can take this back to the color wheel and then continue to work on it over here. So you have those options. Up on Extract Gradient, this will pull a gradient from a picture. Now we can use a different picture. Let's go up here to replace the image. And I have this picture right here. Now, if I do the gradient at this point, it's going to give me gradients including everything in here. Right there, and you can see what it's grabbing from. We can then modify this if I wanted to get a different kind of a gradient. Notice how this is going from dark to light to dark over here. I could go a different direction. Let's say I wanted to have a bright at this end. Right there, I'll just choose that. You swing this one around here, and I'll go right up in here, and then right over here. So I'm grabbing this gradient from the picture and creating a new gradient right down below here. So it's a very easy way to come in and grab gradients from your existing photos. Just move these around to get the exact spot that you want to get the gradient that you're looking for. You even can come in here and adjust your gradient by moving these sliders in the gradient bar right down below here. This is your center point between these two colors, and you can then move where your colors are at. And I think that looks pretty nice. You can see a smaller view right here, and that matches what I'm looking for. Maybe I don't want it quite as dark on that outside edge. I'll pull this in just a little bit. There we go, not quite as dark on that edge. And this only has three colors for the gradient as opposed to the five that we've been seeing in the past two options. So very useful tool here. The next one over is the accessibility tools. And this allows you to take a couple of colors and then adjust them for the best visible contrast. And that's not too bad. It's white against a medium-ish color. If I darken that color down, notice our contrast ratio right here. I'll bring this back a little bit. It's going to make that color darker. And the increase of the contrast ratio, which makes the text more legible, if people have vision problems, this will help them to see this easier. There are some better suggestions taking the basic concept here and then coming over here. Let's just go ahead and do apply that. Let's apply the next one. And the next one, these are all more contrast as you go down here, and it gives you more suggestions as it works. So it's an easy way to come in here and try to make your color choices if you're using text on a color background as legible as possible. The basic idea is the higher the contrast, the better it's going to be. Let's go back now to the color wheel. I'm just gonna go up here to analogous, our first option, and this gives you colors that are next to your chosen color. Now, if you come in further, Everything gets whiter or more pale. If you come out, it gets more saturated. So your saturation is in and out like that. If you grab an outside one, it's going to pull the other ones around. And they're all evenly spaced, and that's the way that the analogous works. The middle one here, they all follow the middle one, but you can control the other ones separately like that. Notice how I can come in here and move individual ones. Not the middle one, but I can move that one. If I move this one, they all still stay spaced evenly apart. And then we have monochromatic. They're all lined up like that. A triad, same thing, grab your control handle here, pull that around until you get the pleasing color look that you're looking for. Complementary, opposite sides. A split complementary, opposite sides, but split into two parts right here. 
This one tends to work out very well in design. Double split and a square and compound and shades, which are your dark colorations adding black in basically and custom right down below. So very easy to use to come in here and create pleasing looking sets of color and color swatches just by playing around with these controls and working with these until you find a set that you happen to like down below here that's close to what you want. Now on these, we have the hexadecimal color for that right here if you're looking for just one color. And so I can come in here and adjust the values slightly by clicking on each one of these. It will then match everything to that setting. Down below, we have brightness across the bottom and then our RGB colors in here. I'm sticking with RGB because we're working here with Photoshop Elements, which works in the RGB color mode. And on any of these, I can adjust a value. Let's say I wanted to have this in here a bit more cyan, more towards the right on that color. Here's the green value. I'll pull it to the right. And notice how it adjusts that color, but everything else also adjusts along with that. So you do one slider control and everything adjusts to keep it all even. Okay, right hand side. Here's where you can save this out. Now, you're logged in, you can set up different libraries. I'll just put this into my library right here. You can give this thing a name. Let's call this one Nice Blues. You can give it tags down here. They will recommend some tags. Blue is in there, green is in there. It's bright, so you can use these tags or you can come in here and actually type in your own tag right down below if you want to. You can choose to publish this. This will then publish it online so that other people can see the color palette set that you've come up with. Up to you if you want to do that or not. And when you're all set here, go down to Save, click on Save, and that saves it to the library. Now that it's in the library, we can go ahead and get this over into Photoshop Elements. Now across the top, we have Create up here. This is the Create section we've been working in. There's also Explore, and you can come in here and look at different currently popular themes and where those themes are being used right down there. Current trends going on in the Trends tab in here. Fashion trends, graphic design trends, illustration, and so forth. Let's go over here to Libraries, and I have five libraries set up right now. Let's just open up My Library, and here's the one we just did, Nice Blues. If you roll over this, you get this little download icon right there. Click on that. It then shows that downloaded as a JPEG. But there are other ways to do this as well. And if you click right on the color swatches, it brings up a larger view. There are your hexadecimals. You can copy that number out if you want to use just that one hexadecimal color. You can change the name. You can change your tags down here. But more importantly, over on the right hand side, there's that download as JPEG. But what we want is to download as ASE right here. And this is a special file type that allows different Adobe products to share color swatches. We'll see how that works. Let's click on that and then click on save. And that's now downloaded and saved. There we go. Okay, let's so now go over to Photoshop Elements and see how we can bring this into the swatch sets over there. Here's our folder I downloaded those into. There is that ASE file. And right above it is the JPEG version right here. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. We are inside of Photoshop Elements and you want to bring up your swatches. That's Window and Color Swatches right here. Now inside the color swatches, it'll be up like that probably, there you go. Upper right hand corner, click on that little icon right there, brings up the menu, and down here, you can load swatches. Click on that, go into the folder that you saved the ASE file into, come down to the file type and change this to swatch exchange. And there's the one that we just downloaded from the Adobe Color site, choose load, and then in your swatches, scroll to the bottom, and right there is that swatch set that we made over there inside of the Adobe Color Wheel. If you want to save this, go up here and come down to Save Swatches. You can then save this as an ASO file. You can put it anywhere you want to. It doesn't really matter. I'll just leave it right here. Give it a new name if you want to. Choose Save. And you can then come back and load that in at any time just by going here to Load Swatches. And you can then go back and load in your new set that includes your new color swatches. And if you like this video, hit that like button. Click on Share. Click on Subscribe. Make sure you check out my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that at the top of the description, and I'll see you next time.